So now everyone is very, very comfortable with the idea of a directory, block, node, map. Giving you like a couple of examples that you know you're you're all drawing on your vast resources of low-level disk hacking. Okay, never mind. So let's let's just talk about like how does one go about doing a data hiding attack against structured storage? It's very simple. Basically, you need to allocate space where you're going to put your data. Uh, the ways to do that is basically to exploit bugs in the code that interprets and uses that structured data. Right? There's, there's roughly three types of bugs that we're going after. There's bugs in parsing, so it might incorrectly read the structured data. Uh, it might in, there's bugs in interpretation, so it might incorrectly interpret the structured data on the disk. And also there are bugs in presentation. So when it takes that data and presents it to the user in a forensics tool, it might inaccurately show the uh, contents of what they're looking at. Right? So once you've allocated that space, you need to inject data into that. How do you do that? Very simple. Fisting. Fisting is the file system insertion and subversion technique. Right? It's a very generic technique for exploiting structured data storage. Basically, all you need to do to fist is you find a hole and you fist it. So right now you're probably thinking, what holes can I fist? Well, first you need to find a fist size hole. Uh, generally speaking, uh, these things that you're looking for are special files within a file system. So they're, they're files that have uh, implicit readings that are dealt with implicitly rather than explicitly. Um, you look for slack space. Usually there's ways to allocate slack space or to gain additional slack space within uh, metadata structures. And the best part is uh, slack space is inaccessible from user land and it's actually uh, frequently inaccessible from forensics tools as well. And then uh, finally we have reserved portions of uh, metadata structure. And the thing to remember is reserved means reserved for hacker use only. So anytime you see reserved in a metadata structure, you can put your data there. Go ahead and fist it, no one's gonna notice. Okay, so forensics tool bugs that we, we care about are, generally speaking, uh, they're related to incomplete or ignorant implementations. So the guys who put together the file system parsing code for forensics tools are, generally speaking, idiots. Um, they don't read the specs properly, and then they implement just enough to uh, access the, the specified data. They don't go the next step, so that's what we need to do. So there's usually uh, underused or um, non-typical or atypical usages of uh, structured storage features that they ignore. Um, there's also logic bugs, so there's ways that you can access edge cases in certain, certain types of um, structured storage, and you can exploit those edge cases for data storage. And uh, finally, there's, there's straightforward security bugs, uh, like uh, buffer overflows, integer wraps, that sort of stuff. Generally speaking, uh, I don't recommend going for a security bug because it's very difficult to uh, anticipate ahead of time what sort of forensics tool is going to be used against the disk image. So if you go out of your way to put like a really clever end case attack in there and the guy uses sleuth kit and FTK, then you're screwed, right? So you're better off just uh, playing it subtle. So aspire to subtlety, avoid like making waves and upsetting people. So fisting for all. The, the great thing is you can basically fist any structured data storage at all, right? We're going to look first of all at fisting file systems and then we're going to look at uh, allocations, uh, sorry, application file formats. Okay, so uh, now specifically just to look at OSX, we're going to look at uh, HFS plus, and then um, I also have the application uh, file format attacks that, that kind of come under OSX here, but you can use them on anything. So I'm now going to give everyone a lightning quick introduction to HFS, sorry, the HFS plus file system. So here's your induction. Uh, HFS stands for the hierarchical file system plus, it, it came out with OS X. There's some uh, backwards compatibility stuff in there for OS 9 and earlier. Uh, it was very, very heavily influenced by HFS, which is just the hierarchical file system, no plus. Uh, the on-disk uh, structure is actually quite complicated because they use B star trees. And B star trees are a specific form of binary tree um, that like, when it gets written out to disk, it, it is a little bit annoying to deal with. Uh, if anyone's really interested in the technical specifications for this, the Apple uh, Technical Note uh, 1150 is actually very, very good, and I highly recommend it. Uh, it makes great reading. You can, you know, take it on the train, have a nice cup of coffee. Yeah, maybe it's just me, but they, they, they really write it quite well. So this is what the file system looks like. Uh, it's, it's mostly gray and white with some black bits. Okay, so you, you can kind of see at the top there, there's a... Um, 
the header. Then there are several special files. Uh, then there's allocation space. There's a copy of the header at the end. And that's, that's pretty much it. Right? So the components that I mentioned earlier, we have the header. So in this case, the header is called the volume header. A block is called a block. And a node is actually, uh, it's made up of, of different parts. So the block lists are made up of extents, which can be stored in a couple of different places. And the metadata is stored in uh, several different catalog file entries. So the catalog file basically contains your file system structure, the, the whole directory structure that you're familiar with. Right? And then the, uh, the maps itself are the catalog file entries. So there's, there's sort of two core concepts that you need, to, you need to get your head around. First of all, there's data forks. And the other one is B star trees. So data forks are pretty straightforward. Um, Basically, a data fork just uh, is a, a stream of data that's stored in a specific location. So what you have is the location information. It says start here and read this number of bytes. And it's got a, a series of those uh, records. And then it's also got the overall size and, um, the, of the, the user data contained within that. So what we're looking at is this. right? So your fork data is uh, basically the, this header at the top, which has a logical size. So that's the size of uh, the internal data. There's the total block. So that's the total number of blocks that have been allocated to store all the data. And then uh, there's an array of these descriptors, which basically tell you the first block and then the number of blocks to read. Um, one of the areas that you should not store data is between the end of the logical size and the end of the allocated blocks. That's what's traditionally called slack space. Uh, every forensics investigator knows how to find data there. And basically, that's the only place that they know how to look. Right? So if you tell them that you're using slack space, this is where they're going to go. They're going to look at all of the blocks that have been allocated. Then they're going to find the end of your user data and that space at the end. They're going to look at that and be really excited if they find something. So don't put your shit there like the um, but it's the anti-forensics toolkit inside uh, Metasploit. That's where it puts all of its data. Don't do that, it's stupid. Okay. There are a number of special files within the, um, within the HFS plus file system. There's the allocation file. So the allocation file basically, it stores a bitmap to indicate which blocks within the file system have been uh, allocated or not. There's the catalog file, which stores information on uh, basically all the metadata about a file it's, uh, specifically itself. There's the extent file, which stores uh, fragmented file block information. Uh, there's the startup file, which is optional. It's used on very, very old archaic systems. Uh, and it tells you where to find the kernel loader on a file system. And then there's the attributes file, which uh, stores extended attribute information. All right. uh, we'll come back to all of these when we start attacking them. OK, so uh, B star trees are used very, very heavily within uh, the HFS plus file system. Basically, uh, what a B star tree does is it's a binary tree where all of the leaf nodes are connected in a linked list. Um, the idea is that a, uh, a file is divided up into nodes. Each node has an address. You can point to it by uh, indicating the address. It's pretty straightforward stuff. Um, nodes are basically uh, one of four different types. You have header nodes, which store uh, metadata about the entire uh, B star tree. You have uh, map nodes, which tell you about the allocation. They have a, a bitmap indicating the allocation of nodes within uh, that file. You have index nodes, which are basically a, a pairing of a key and a node pointer, so that you can rapidly do your binary tree stuff. Everyone's very comfortable with binary trees, right? while start is less than end for mid equals, blah, 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 all that. Yeah, of course. I won't go into it. So, um, and then finally, you have your leaf nodes, which store a key and a uh, data record. So once again, I have a, a very cool illustration, which I did not copy directly out of the technical docs. Um, so this is what a node actually looks like. All right? This is kind of important. The, the key thing to look at over there is the part where it says free space. Right, you can cross that out and write in reserved for hacker usage only. So the idea with a, a B star tree node here is that you've got a number of records inside of there. And any unallocated space that isn't being occupied by a record is available as free space that can be used later on. Um, 
for everyone that wants to see what a, a bee tree looks like, it looks like this. It's got a red bit, an orange bit, uh, and some other colors. Uh, basically, at the top, what you have is the header node, which has a pointer to the first leaf node and the last leaf, leaf node. The ones in the middle are index nodes. So you would follow down through these index nodes to get to your actual data and the leaf nodes. And the ones at the very bottom are leaf nodes containing the keys and the actual data. Right? So you just you'd follow your tree down with, you know, like, if my key is less than 8, then go to the left. Otherwise, go to the right sort of thing. Yep. OK. So let's break that. OK, so we're going to look at like specific attacks that we can do against HFS plus, right? Uh, starting out with just file allocation attacks. So as I mentioned, there are special files. You can do cool things with special files. So uh, one of them is there's a special file called the bad blocks file. The bad blocks file exists to uh, allocate blocks which contain bad sectors and prevent them from being used by user data. So you go to the extents file and you mark extents that hold bad blocks as belonging to uh, the file number five. Seen it as catalog node ID. So any, any extent that's owed by catalog node ID five is not flagged by the file system checker and it's basically ignored by forensics tools because once again the old like bad blocks trick. It's the oldest one in the book and it still works particularly on uh, HFS plus. Um, but it's, this is like way too lame for us. Like it's very, very obvious. We're not going to do it. So there's also, um, as I mentioned, there's the startup file. Once again, the startup file is uh, used on very, very archaic systems. Uh, the idea is that if you have a, a bootloader and it needs to load the kernel, you don't want to have to go and write the entire HFS plus file system into that bootloader. So you, you uh, load the kernel. You put it in like a specific location and you write your bootloader to be able to read just this one file and then to be able to go there itself. It makes it a lot easier. Um, no one actually uses this because it's fucking ancient. So what you have instead is a zero length startup file which is ignored by everything. What can you do? Well, it doesn't have to be zero length. It can be an arbitrary size. So you simply take the startup file, you allocate space for it and you put your data in there. Done. Uh, similarly, you can do this with the allocation file, in which the allocation file has a uh, space that's been allocated for the, the bitmap, and the kernel will not actually look beyond the last element of that bitmap. But there's nothing that tests that the size of the allocation file is exactly the right size to store that bitmap. So you can increase the size of the allocation file and put your data at the end there. Um, I mentioned that there was some backwards compatibility one of the things that happens is uh, older, older uh, Mac OS 9 systems uh, wouldn't be able to access an HFS plus uh, drive. So what they did is they put the, um, the HFS plus drive inside an HFS file system. It's called an HFS wrapper. So you can actually have your HFS file system embedded inside an HFS file system. Right? Got that? HFS file system inside HFS plus. Everyone looks at the HFS plus. But you actually have two file systems that you can do stuff with. So um, the HFS wrapper, you can actually use for data storage yourself. So you can allocate additional space within the, the HFS wrapper, uh, particularly at the end of the bad blocks file. So the embedded HFS plus volume is marked as bad blocks within the HFS, within the, the outer wrapper. You can extend the size of the bad blocks file and then use the slack space at the end. All right? Very straightforward stuff. Uh, this will work probably for the next few years because uh, even, even if you tell them what's wrong with forensics tools, they don't fix them. All right? It's not like part of their, their business to fix problems. It's only to like come out with uh, new features and stuff. Okay, so those are, those are attacks that we can do against allocation files. Uh, I haven't implemented them yet because it's actually really, really irritating to do allocation with all of the B trees. I've spent most of my time implementing my, uh, my B tree code. So um, attacks that we can do against the, the binary trees themselves. These are much more interesting because an allocation attack where you basically take a file that should have zero length and you make it non-zero is very, very easy to detect, right? If you have a startup file that's not zero length, Maybe there's something in there that's a bit weird and you can look into it. If you have a large number of bad blocks, maybe you want to look at those. Right? These are not subtle. 
This stuff's a bit better. So one of the things that you can do 